Mm. Captives are obviously people who've got captured. Right. Which, you know, in in the natural we'd say POWs, prisoners of war. And 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 um, so we have captives and then we have prisoners. And prisoners are typically people that a judge sends to jail. Like you you have a prison sentence. Right. So captives, in my opinion, captives are people who got captured in that they believe lies. So Jesus said, mm. you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Well, there's two words for, for the word, uh, uh, word, for the word, word, W-O-R-D. Yeah. <laughs> How do you say that? Yeah. Logos word, word. and rhema. Yeah. Okay. But so when Jesus said, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free, he doesn't use the word logos or the word rhema. He uses a Greek word that means we, we get our word reality from it. So what Jesus is saying is, you'll know reality, and that will free you. Wow. So, so hmm. I would say that people who are captives, Isaiah 61, those are people who believed a lie. Like, they're, they're living in a virtual reality. It's not real. It feels real. looks real. It's like watching a movie that plays on all your emotions, right? Right. But it's not real. Hmm. So how do you get out of that? You find the truth, what is reality, and that makes you free. Mm. So let's say your father called you by a bad name. You know, you're a girl and your father called you. You're, you're a whore. Or, you know, some, we, some of us grew up in such horrible. And, and we believe that. We believe, man, I'm just a whore. I'm just, a, that's what, I'm just an immoral person. Right. Well, when I received Jesus Christ, I became a saint. Mm. And it matters not what my behavior was before I, I found Jesus because I'm a new creation. Mm. So, but if I believe that I'm a whore or I'm immoral, I'm some terrible right. name someone called me, I'm feeling all the emotions mm. of an alias name that isn't mine. Right. And I'm wow. inviting demonic activity into my life because I, because I have exchanged my identity mm. for an alias identity. Now, a prisoner is a different thing. A prisoner is somebody who the judge sends to court and, of course, I mean, judge sends to prison. Matthew 18 is a great example. You know, he's, it's the story of the guy who got forgiven a million bucks. You remember the story. Yep. And his, the king forgives him a million dollars kind of thing. And his friend owes him like 10 grand. And his friend's like, hey, have mercy on me. And he's like, forget you, pay up. Mm. And sends the guy to prison, you know. And the king finds out about it. And he's like, hey, didn't I forgive you a million bucks? Mm. And your friend owed you 10 grand. And, and it says this, the last two verses are startling. And the opening statement, because Jesus opens this, the parable with, the kingdom of heaven is like. Mm. And he ends the parable with, and so the king sent him into prison and had the tormentors tormented him, torment him until he paid the last cent. Mm. And the last verse is startling. He said, so shall my heavenly father do to you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Okay, so here's someone who's demonized, right? The tormentors are tormenting him. But... Why is he tormented? He's tormented because he has unforgiveness in his life. The Lord has removed the covering from him, mm. the blood of Jesus, like we talked about earlier. Okay. Has been, the, the, the Lord has removed his covering from him so that the tormentors torment him into forgiveness. Mm. And so, you know, when you're dealing with somebody who's demonized like that, you're like, okay, first thing, is this just normal warfare? Okay. If it is, then, you know, we'll talk, we can talk through some things that help that. Is this a captive or a prisoner? Captive, what do I do? I find the lie. I believe the truth. I make the devil leave by out-truthing him. Mm. What mm. do I do if someone's a captive? Well, there's, some, there's sin in their life. You know, or a prisoner, right? Or I mean a prisoner, right. I'm sorry. There, there's sin in their life someplace, like like they have unforgiveness, maybe they have a lifestyle sin, mm. Something, something's opened the door. Right. Well, you close the door, you get forgiveness from God, then the, then the demon has to leave. Mm. Wow. So how do you know if someone's a captive or a prisoner? Well, I think that's where the gift of discernment comes in. Okay. You know, that's, you, you, you ask the Holy Spirit. In fact, every time I do a deliverance, with anyone, I, I say to myself, okay, is this person a captive? Have they believed lies? Or is this person a prisoner? Mm. Is this person got a sin? Some, some kind of, I, you know, I'm not talking about like they lied once in their life and oh my God, you know, a whole demonic realms against them. I'm like, right. uh, there wouldn't be a single person in 
there wouldn't be a single Christian who isn't demonized if that was the case. Right. We're talking about lifestyle sins. Right. We're talking about, uh, you know, we're not talking about someone like, I got mad at my dad and I had unforgiveness in my heart for two days and I asked him for No, we're talking about people who are bitter people. Mm. We're talking about people who are offended people. It's their normal. Yeah, we're talking yeah. about people who are, you know, they're, they're living in pornography or they're, they're living in, you know, in, they're cohabiting with people, they're, they're practicing homosexuality, they're, they're doing drugs. And we're talking about, we're not talking about so much an incident, although it can happen that way, very seldom. We, are you going to find someone demonized over a incident? Mm, right. 99.9% of the time, you're going to find when people repeat sin until it becomes a lifestyle, mm. they don't realize that a little key opens a huge demonic door in their life. Mm. Wow. 